Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Silicon Valley, in the heart of Silicon Valley, in Santa Clara, California, Santa Clara Convention Center. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angles. I'm John my host, Jeff Kelly, chief analyst for the big data practice at wikibon.org. And our next guest is Boris Rensky, co-founder and CMO of Marantis, um, famous company in the OpenStack ecosystem, doing some amazing work in cloud, building clouds from scratch. They lay down the big iron. All the, all the, they hang the iron, they put the software in, they deploy OpenStack. Welcome back. You, you were on theCUBE uh, at OpenStack last year, OpenStack Summit. Uh, welcome back. Good to be here. Thank you. Um, Marantis, for folks who don't understand what's going on in, in, in the cloud space, they're really the leader in building out OpenStack. They, they, I call them the big truck that everyone calls in to back up and bring OpenStack to the enterprise. So you guys have done an amazing uh, job with OpenStack. Um, certainly working from the where it's at now and kind of as it's evolving, knowing the inside baseball, working the bu putting just on all the buttons, wiring it together and making it deployable. So congratulations. Um, what a cloud month or two it's been. OpenStack continues to gain traction. We'll be live at OpenStack Summit in Atlanta. So we'll be there broadcasting live. You the Cloud Foundry announcement, all kinds of craziness going on, HP, Azure, everything's going cloud. So everyone's talking cloud. You had the IBM CEO, Satya Nadella today, up in San Francisco saying cloud first. Um, what, what's, the, what's going on? So give us the perspective. What's going on in the cloud wars right now? <laughs> perspective on cloud wars? Well, I mean, everyone's got a cloud now. I mean, is that, is that good or bad? <laughs> um, I think that uh, um, if we were to uh, kind of try and uh, discuss the, uh, um, the situation in cloud in general, um, it could be a, a very long and non-specific conversation because in my personal opinion, and it's not, not my opinion, but I think that's already a, a well-accepted industry opinion that the word cloud is pretty much synonymous with internet. And uh, you know, it's kind of hard to comment on what's happening um, with internet, but uh, I can talk a little bit about uh, what's happening with OpenStack um, and uh, share some of those perspective. And OpenStack right, well, is. Uh, oh, before we get to OpenStack, let's let's get specific. We, I mean, I totally agree with you. It's it's the infrastructure. It's the new printing press of the modern era. Um, but let's talk specifically about these vendors. Are they behind? Are they catching up? Are they, you know, I mean, OpenStack has done some great work with shipping customers, people voting with code. We're seeing it. IBM. I, uh, HP, Microsoft, and Cloud Foundry, are they behind, ahead? What's going on with those guys? Um, well, when it comes to the pure play definition of cloud, which uh, from what I believe has really emerged um, and been kind of indoctrinated into the world by Amazon and their Elastic Compute Cloud offering, if you define cloud from that standpoint, if you look at cloud as an infrastructure as a service, specifically hosted infrastructure as a service, then uh, um, I think that uh, it's uh, hard to deny that uh, there is a single leader. Uh, that leader is AWS, and uh, all the other guys are kind of playing catch up. And uh, um, OpenStack, to a large extent, is a vehicle for them to play that catch up game. Um, and uh, I believe that uh, um, it's it's actually progressing fairly well. Here, let's talk about OpenStack then. So, so obviously, OpenStack has. has an enterprise focus, people love it. People in the enterprise I talk to, Dave Vellante and the team at Wikibon talks to, they embrace OpenStack. It's, it's, it allows them for Lego block-like mindset. They get to look under the hood. It's open source, a lot of people are playing involved. Give us the update on what's happening with OpenStack and what, and what you guys are doing right now. Um, so I think that the interesting thing that's becoming obvious with OpenStack is that uh, um, it's uh, kind of moving from being simply um, an open source cloud and uh, potentially a rival to uh, solutions like Eucalyptus or CloudStack to really um, the um, commoditization movement in the application infrastructure space. Um, 
originally, well, when OpenStack was started, there was a kind of a, you know, a focused solution, um, object storage, um, compute orchestration, uh, but as the project can, can continues to grow, um, it's starting to sprawl into all kinds of directions. And uh, the interesting announcements recently have been coming out is uh, announcement directly relevant to actually this conference is an announcement about uh, Trove, which is a database as a service, the OpenStack native service um, that is database as a service. Um, Solum, which is a competitor effectively to Cloud Foundry, um, and uh, many others. And new projects are actually getting at it, um, probably uh, at the pace of uh, one a month. And as this is happening, actually, it's becoming obvious that OpenStack is no longer really just uh, you know a cloud system per se. It's a, um, a commoditization movement in uh, um, application infrastructure space that's uh, extremely disruptive to a lot of the incumbent players, large incumbent players like Oracle, like IBM, like HP, that uh, um, actually have a lot vested in the application infrastructure space. Um, and I actually think um, that this is a good thing because what OpenStack is doing is uh, it's uh, um, basically, in my opinion, um, leveling the playing field um, in the infrastructure space. Um, what's, what's happening historically is that you know, you'd have a large player come in and they would come up with some very specific niche, disruptive, innovative solution, such as you know, back in the day Oracle came up with a database effectively. And then uh, they would leverage it to uh, uh, build all kinds of uh, additional value-add solutions around it, ranging from, you know, in case of Oracle, actually um, database management uh, infrastructure on top of its Oracle database, and then going all the way up into the enterprise applications. Um, and um, this, they end up effectively controlling the entire stack based on one single kind of uh, innovation that they did back in the day. Um, and what OpenStack is doing is uh, it's uh, um, leveraging the innovations and in, uh, how you can do collaborative development to actually take all the uh, pieces inside the application infrastructure that one could uh, classify as a commodity or you know, not so disruptive innovation and effectively rebuilds them in open source, making them open and available to everybody. Therefore, forcing uh, the uh, application infrastructure market into the situation where um, you have to be innovative and you have to be disruptive to actually be able to extract margins. So talk about the, the war and the, and the war. Wars, we, we use the word war, so it drives more activity and blog and, and, and commentary. Um, talk about the, uh, the past layers. That's where the action is. And if you look at what IBM has done with Cloud Foundry and the variety of announcements that are going on around that, the, the platform as a service is where the action is because that's going to really move up the stack with value. You're going to see the commoditization of the infrastructure as a service. That's goodness. That's happening. Amazon's also deleting the way there. You guys are doing with OpenStack. Um, but at the, where the developers are playing is past and above. And there's, talk, I want to ask you the specific question. The mindset between fat pass and thin pass. Thin is better? <laughs> I feel like a commercial on TV. Is thin, is thin better? I mean, there's different approaches. Cloud Foundry seems to be a little bit bloated from people we talk to. OpenStack um, seems to want, want a more thinner approach. What's your take on it? Um, so, I don't think that uh, the fat pass and thin pass is, uh, in my opinion, you know, the, the right way to, to categorize pass. I think that uh, uh, you can think of passes as being more opinionated or less opinionated. Um, and on the, you know, the um, extremely zero opinion spectrum of pass, you can look to actually and claim that uh, configuration management tools such as Puppet or Chef are to some extent, uh, you know, um, encompass elements of PaaS. On the kind of a more opinionated spectrum of PaaS, um, you have, uh, you know, things like uh, Google App Engine or Heroku, where um, developers operate in uh, much higher levels of abstraction. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, there, there, isn't, there isn't a clear answer uh, um, in terms of which approach is, is better. Um, you know, it's, it's clear that uh, you know, operating at higher level of abstraction using things like Google App Engine, you can uh, uh, be faster and achieve higher uh, development velocity. But uh, there is definitely a kind of a gaping hole, in my opinion, still today in uh, um, the uh, paths that is less opinionated, so to speak. Um, there's been a lot of movement, and Cloud Foundry is uh, uh, effectively, you know, in my opinion, is more on the opinionated spectrum of paths. Now, um, 
in OpenStack, going back to OpenStack, because you know I'm an OpenStack guy and I like to talk about that. Um, recently, there's been um, um, a lot of movement around the project called Solom. And the reason why I'm personally excited about Solom is because actually Solom, in my opinion, fills this gap um, of uh, um, you know the less opinionated path spectrum. And what it enables you to do is uh, um, allows you to effectively um, manage um, what people refer to as uh, legacy applications in a path way. Um, to be a little bit more specific, um, you know the. Cloud Foundry guys, primarily about web scale applications. Now, there's still a lot of money in legacy applications, but there's still a lot of opportunity in simplifying kind of uh, the management and operation of these applications. Um, and if you can effectively describe um, the uh, properties of this application, such as uh, how you monitor it, and uh, how you scale it and put some uh, policies around uh, uh, based on the monitoring input, uh, what you need to scale in infrastructure, you can effectively encapsulate um, a legacy application and give it the web scale properties. And that's what Solom does. And that's one of the parts of the show here at Percona Live. But I want to ask you just quickly, what's the timetable on Solom? People have been saying it's going to be delayed. Is it coming soon? Cloud Foundry is trying to use that as a, as a lever against Solom. Uh, is it on track? Is it slotted for next year? What's the update? It's 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 early, um, and as with anything in the uh, um, OpenStack community, it's uh, um, you know it's 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 not tracking against a specific release date line or milestone. So right now, actually, Solom is one of the more actively discussed projects in the uh, um, OpenStack community. And if you measure you know, activity around different projects, you can measure them around commits, you know, lines of code written, email sent, et cetera. So if you measure in terms of discussion, Solom is actually uh, one of the more actively discussed projects. But I think like number four out of all of the OpenStack that's a good, projects. And that's a good thing. And that's a good thing, and it's very specific to the stage in which it's in. Uh, and the stage in which it's in is still kind of a um, architectural design kind of phase, right? So uh, people are writing code, but they're actually talking more about how to structure things properly than producing the code. Okay, um, so I want, I want to shift gears and talk about your business a little bit because I know you guys have been watching you guys closely. Um, you know, good customer touch points. You guys have a great presence with a lot of customers using OpenStack. So give us the update. What is the current state of customers rolling out OpenStack in the enterprise? Um, just share with us some anecdotal figures and stats or, or comments around what's happening with the customers and how they're using OpenStack and what you guys are doing specifically. Of course. So. Um, this year is actually an interesting year for OpenStack, and I have predicted that this would be the year, uh, still two years ago, and I believe that this is the year of uh, actually uh, um, um, enterprise adoption of OpenStack. So, um, you know, if you look at you know the earlier history, um, most uh, organizations adopting OpenStack were the uh, SaaS web guys and service provider guys. Uh, this year, we're starting to see actually real um, enterprise traction. Um, so um, the uh, tech savvy uh, organizations in the uh, financial space, in the media services space, um, are starting to actually move uh, uh, their OpenStack adoption beyond just early POCs and into the production stages. So um, we're seeing a lot of uh, customer interest in that respect. What kind of feedback and what do they say to you and they say, okay, we're, we're feeling good about it. What are, the, what are some of the comments you're hearing from them? Um, everybody realizes that uh, OpenStack hands down uh, kind of a won the uh, open source you know, cloud war, uh, at least uh, from the mindshare standpoint. Uh, there's still definitely uh, um, you know, some technological gaps in the platform, it is early. Um, if I was to pinpoint uh, specific concerns that have been raised by the customers, um, upgrades and patching has been an acute problem. Um, they are just now starting to get tackled effectively by the OpenStack community as a whole. Up until now, uh, OpenStack has been very much in kind of this uh, feature function building acceleration mode. Now that they've built uh, a product from the feature function standpoint that you know would, would meet the minimum viable product requirements, um, you start addressing operational concerns. And uh, you know, OpenStack in that respect is just, you know, they're starting to think about it, the community at least. Um, the customers need it talk uh, about, for adoption to happen. Talk about developers. Right now, one of the things that we were commenting on the opening segment this morning was, 
the spamming effect that developers are getting now. I mean, now it's a win for the developers. Everyone wants to win the developer community. That's good and bad, because now developers now are kind of driving the market. So there's a, right. a demand, supply, demand issue. But also it can be confusing if people are trying to jam frameworks and software down their throat, you know, proprietary framework or whatever. So obviously open source will be the equalizer there. So what's your take on the developer community in the cloud? We're hearing a lot of folks saying that I want to win the developers. It's easy to say it, it's hard to do it. So what's your take on the current developer uh, traction within OpenStack and within cloud in general? Well, I mean, there's two angles to kind of developer traction. There's uh, um, the developers that uh, are looking to um, leverage the platform to actually build applications on top of, and then when it comes to open source, there's the developers that are actually building the platform. And in case of you know open source platforms such as OpenStack, there is oftentimes um, you know kind of a bridging effect between the two because you can be building an app, but you want to be able to kind of you know uh, for that app to reach all the way down to infrastructure, so you might be actually hacking a little bit on the OpenStack code itself. So if uh, you know. I was to uh, uh, comment on the developer traction around the OpenStack community. Um, I think that uh, um, it would be hard to deny uh, uh, a statement that, you know, hands down um, all of the, you know, infrastructure developers building uh, cloud uh, are effectively building OpenStack today, with a few kind of you know exceptions around the periphery that are working on CloudStack and Eucalyptus, et cetera. The majority has shifted towards OpenStack a long time ago. When we're talking about uh, the adoption of the actual you know platform API, um, you know the situation is substantially more fragmented. Um, I agree that you know OpenStack um, OpenStack's API is not as popular as the Amazon API. Um, Amazon is the most popular interface for developers to work with to date. But uh, given the uh, um, amount of traction uh, behind OpenStack, I think that uh, um, they can claim a solid second spot at this point. Talk about certification, obviously. Um, there's been plenty of stories written around you know, OpenStack certification. Uh, where are you guys at with that? What are you guys doing with customers? You know, obviously, it's still a developing market with training and deployment, moving into production. What's, the, what's your take on certification? Um, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> so yeah, um, there's been uh, a number of exciting announcements around certification by um, us as a company and uh, um, the uh, you know OpenStack Foundation in general. And I, I would like to kind of uh, move away from the word certification because it uh, natively has a negative connotation and uh, it rubs a lot of our organizations the wrong way. The reason for it is because uh, historically certification has been uh, um, a vehicle to uh, um, win, um, you know, kind of the ecosystem mind share and create lock-in around a particular vendor solution. Um, if you look at, uh, for instance, you know, um, if you try to examine the reasons why Red Hat became popular in Linux, um, certifying a lot of workloads against uh, their operating system was instrumental um, in them winning. Now, um, I, as I mentioned earlier, I view OpenStack as uh, um, this, uh, you know, commoditization vehicle that levels the playing field for everybody. And uh, certification is uh, one of the areas, in my opinion, that uh, has been massively abused by the vendors in the infrastructure space, but you know, all over the software industry, to actually, um, you know, create customer lock-in and preclude this level playing field, which is, in my opinion, OpenStack's core mission. So what uh, OpenStack um, is uh, setting out to do, and we are helping it uh, do, is uh, effectively make, to a large extent, the concept of certification. Um, irrelevant. Um, the reason and the way we're doing it is uh, you don't need uh, a proprietary vendor anymore, in my opinion, uh, to actually um, certify a certain workload or a certain infrastructure solution against the platform. Um, you can have open tools that will enable you to do the same. And you can have the open tools that will have complete transparency for everybody uh, in terms of uh, what the certification means, what specifically has been tested, what tests have been passed, and you can make the information um, around uh, you know, running those tests um, of you know, vendors X platform against OpenStack, um, you can make them public. 
Um, and uh, through that, you can actually completely obliterate the potential for creating any kind of uh, you know, lock-in around certification. So you're, one of your guys, Dave Fishman, was quoted as saying, we're already seeing these kinds of closed door, open source plays happen in OpenStack, um, which is what you're kind of referring to. Um, really, this comes down to transparency, right? Getting the facts on the table, right? Don't you think? I mean, that's the, that's what everyone wants. And, and yeah, well, I mean, it's not. Sometimes it's not very easy to put the facts on the table because you know, when you when it comes to certification, you need to have the tooling for the vendors to be able to run certification in the open. And again, I'm you know, I'm sorry, I don't want to use the word certification. It's a bad word. You, the testing in the open. Yeah. Um, it's it's not like the vendors are you know, uh, proactively trying to withhold some information, not be transparent, it's just, uh, it's clear that in case of OpenStack, there's a lot of organization with existing um, um, mind share of ISVs, uh, and it's not in their interest to actually go ahead and uh, push, um, you know, the open testing, transparent testing of uh, compatibility between different solutions. So they don't, proactively withhold information, but at the same time, they don't do anything to, uh, to the opposite. Boris, we got to get the hook here, but I want to get you the last word. Uh, great to have you on theCUBE, been following you guys for a while. Um, certainly last year we did some interviews with you guys and, and you guys look great announcements. What are we expecting at OpenStack Summit this year in Atlanta? What do you expect to see there? Brawling, love fest, new code pushes, new use cases. <laughs> Give us a taste of what you're expecting. Um, it's uh, it's a good question. It's, a, it's always a surprise. <laughs> I think that, uh, um, and this has been probably the truth for um, most of the summits so far, but uh, um, I think that we're going to see a lot of interesting vendor announcements that will be testaments to kind of uh, new large vendors um, embracing OpenStack in a new way. You've already probably seen some things uh, that Cisco has been announcing. They've been active with OpenStack, but probably not as active as, for instance, IBM and HP. Um, another interesting player coming into the picture is Oracle. Uh, there's been some announcements that, that, that they've made at high level, uh, saying that they're starting to embrace the OpenStack community, which is, you know, just monumental in my opinion, because if you think of, you know, proprietary, like Oracle is, is, is the apple of infrastructure. They are, and they're going OpenStack. So I think that uh, Their Oracle- Their stock's at an all-time high right now, given that they just surpassed IBM as a software <laughs> company, and Gartner just said IT spending's up. So, and, and they're moving to embrace OpenStack as well. So I think that they're going to be making some interesting announcements as well. Maybe Larry Ellison was right. The iPhone for the enterprise could be a good strategy as stock's up. Uh, HP deserves props too. They've been tirelessly supporting OpenStack from day one. Uh, continue to do an amazing job too. I agree, I agree. So, um, okay, this, that's a wrap here with Boris. We look forward to see you at OpenStack Summit. This is theCUBE, we'll be back with our next guest after this short break. Day one of two days of Percona Live, we're getting under the hood, looking at the database, looking at the technology, looking at what's powering the cloud, what is going to be powering that mobile first, cloud first, that's data first. If you don't have the data, and you don't have the engine of innovation, then cloud kind of falls on its face. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back. Cube.